Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. Hello, and welcome to How to Create Captivating, Deeply Interactive Mobile AR Games in Unity. My name is Dan Miller, and I work as an XR evangelist at Unity. A little bit later, you'll hear from Phil Chaco, a senior product manager on Mars who also works at Unity. Now I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what we'll be talking about in today's session. First, I'll dive into Mobile Augmented Reality, or AR for short. Next, I'll cover AR Foundation, what it is, how it's enabled in Unity, and how it works into the greater picture of Unity's AR platform. Next, we'll hear from Phil, who will describe Mars, giving insight into why we're building it, what it is, and how it works within Unity. Next, I'll hop back in and do an editor demo, overviewing how you can start building with Mars, some of the key components it enables, and how you can build these more interactive and immersive augmented reality applications. Finally, we'll hear from Crikey, an augmented reality company who has been utilizing AR Foundation and more recently Mars to build upon their existing augmented reality platform. Now let's talk a little bit about mobile augmented reality. And one thing I want to note here is that we're really going to be discussing AR Kit and AR Core. So mobile augmented reality. AR Core is Google's augmented reality SDK. It's available on the Android mobile platform, and AR Kit is Apple's augmented reality SDK. It's available on their mobile iOS platform as well as iPad tablet platform. Now, some of the fundamental concepts for mobile augmented reality are things like motion tracking, environmental understanding, and light estimation. From a practical or more feature standpoint, things like motion tracking enable your device to be what we call a six DOF device, or six degrees of freedom. This means that it's tracked both positionally and rotationally as you move throughout the space. For environmental understanding, we have the ability to find planes on horizontal and vertical surfaces. This allows us to understand the real world and place our augmented reality objects on those surfaces. And last but not least, light estimation. This allows us to understand the lighting and the current conditions in the environment so that we can pull that information into our augmented reality experience. From there, we can brighten or shade our augmented reality content to really have them more accurately fit in with the lighting conditions of the real world. Now let's talk about AR Foundation. This is Unity's augmented reality SDK, specifically built for enabling multi-platform AR experiences. When you look at AR Foundation, and you look at all the individual platforms, at the bottom you have the different devices. On top of that, we have the SDKs that are built by those platforms. On the Unity side, we have the Unity packages. So we have packages for AR Kit, AR Core, Magic Leap, as well as Windows MR to enable HoloLens. Now all of these packages feed up data into AR Foundation. In AR Foundation, we have subsystems, which allow you to take the data from these different platforms and have them at this abstracted layer. From there, as a developer, you can simply build your AR Foundation application to these different platforms. If you build on iOS, for example, we automatically hook in ARKit behind the scenes to take advantage of all of the subsystems in AR Foundation. If you happen to build for Lumen or Magic Leap, we will simply hook that up behind the scenes as well and allow you to create that AR app. Now, as you'll see throughout this presentation, Mars is an additional layer that also takes advantage of the data from AR Foundation. It allows you to build for all these different platforms and gives you a more streamlined and intuitive way to actually build these experiences. So really what we wanna do at Unity is enable Mars to be that go-to solution for building these augmented and mixed reality applications. Now let's talk a little bit about the supported features. You can see here that there's a variety of different features available on multiple platforms as well as individual platforms. When you look at things like pass-through video, this is actually grabbing the camera feed from your mobile device and displaying it on the screen. This makes sense for mobile platforms like ARKit and ARCore, 
But for Magic Leap and HoloLens, where you're just seeing a pass-through screen enabling you to see the real world, it doesn't make sense to have a video there. Similarly on the Gestures platform, or the Gestures feature. On Magic Leap and HoloLens, you can actually track the user's hands and detect different gestures or different hand poses. But on mobile, when the users are holding the device in their hand, that doesn't really make sense. And really, when you look at these core features, you'll notice that a lot of these similarities here within ARKit and ARCore. And this is really where AR Foundation started. We recognized there was a lot of similarity or overlap between what the different platforms support. And we built this abstraction to really enable developers to build more quickly and support all of the augmented reality platforms. Some more features here with things like face tracking, 2D image tracking, 3D object tracking, and more. And one thing you'll note here is that the last three features, 2D and 3D body tracking, human segmentation and occlusion, and collaborative participants are only available on the ARKit platform. These features are actually enabled through ARKit 3.0, which is only available in AR Foundation. Now, even though these features are only supported on ARKit right now, if any of the other platforms decided to add a similar or the same feature, we've set up the hooks inside AR Foundation to easily link those in so that you as a developer simply have to update your packages in order to take advantage of that feature, not rebuild your app from scratch. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the unique features available in AR Foundation. The first is universal render pipeline support. The universal render pipeline is Unity's new lightweight renderer that's enabled for all platforms. It's more optimized and it enables things like the shader graph and the VFX graph, which allows you to create both shaders as well as visual effects with a visual node-based editor. Next are ARKit 3.0 features. These are those unique features that I talked about in the previous slide that are only available through AR Foundation. And last but not least is the Camera Image API. This is a multi-platform optimized way to get access to that camera feed so that then you can process it and apply your own custom computer vision algorithms or object detection in a way that allows you to easily access that camera image without having to copy it back and forth between the GPU and CPU. So what's AR Foundation actually look like in your scene? So on the left here, you have your Unity scene. By default, we give you an AR session origin, which has an AR camera as a child of it. There's also an AR session object that holds a couple additional components. On your AR session origin is where you attach these subsystem managers. And this is really how you enable the different features. You have things like the AR plane manager, AR raycast manager, face manager, and tracked image manager. And all of these components are really that abstraction that lives within the AR Foundation package. Now, as you noticed, some features are supported on some platforms, but not others. And what we've done within Unity and within the AR Foundation package with all of these AR Foundation subsystem managers is we've allowed you to check if they're supported at runtime. So each of these managers actually has a dot supported Boolean that allows you to determine if a feature is supported. And if it is, you can do one thing. If it's not, you can kind of fail silently or you know instruct the user that a feature might not be supported. And really this enables you to kind of continue to build that functionality without checking on a you know per platform basis. If I'm iOS, do this. If I'm Android, do that. Instead, you're just linking into these subsystem managers and checking if they're supported on a feature by feature basis. So in conclusion, AR Foundation is really this core AR framework. It's specifically built to enable you to build cross-platform augmented reality experiences on a multitude of AR platforms that are available today. And really, it's this abstraction on top of the supported platforms. At Unity, we're not going to add functionality for different features outside of what's supported on the platforms. This is really a way to enable all of these features. And as the platforms add new features, we'll update AR Foundation with them. It's also future proof. So as you develop a platform or as you develop an application, you can check if a certain feature is supported and handle it accordingly. And last but not least, 
AR Foundation is really the base for our current tools and future products. As you'll see here next, Mars is really built to take advantage of AR Foundation and all the platforms that it enables. We're also building new products and integrations like Unity Reflect that use AR Foundation as that core functionality. And now I'll pass it off to Phil to tell you a little bit more about Mars. Thank you, Dan. I'm Phil Chaco, product lead for XR Tools at Unity. What is Mars? As AR developers, you know that machines don't directly understand what a chair is, what a wall is, what a machine is. And so you know, telling, a, telling, telling your application you know, how to react to the real world environment itself is, is a big challenge. And we hope to speed that up and make your, make your startup costs a lot faster with Mars. Even once you do that, uh, building to a device and, and testing it and iterating is just a really lengthy process. We want to really cut your iteration speed down down quite a bit. Um, you know, that's a huge, huge complaint that we hear from, from our developers. And then, you know, when you're on different devices with different sensing capabilities, it's really hard to maintain when you don't know in advance what device you're at, your, your end user is actually going to be on. So Mars attempts to tackle each of these issues in turn. So the first thing we do is allow give you new ways to define how content uh, should, should work through an authoring framework. Now that's an editor, you need the editor extension, and then we'll also have a mobile companion app for you. We're going to give you make your testing and QA life a lot easier by providing a simulation-based creation interface uh, in an editor extension, and and uh, you'll see get get to see a little bit later uh, what that's like. And then you know you don't even have to think that hard about uh, about your runtime logic. We have build once, deploy anywhere. We'll be able to let you run your content through a logic engine that'll take care of. Uh, different devices with different sensing capabilities uh, all in the background. Uh, first thing we let you do is um, define new content using new air specific uh, workflows and mobile apps. And we've got what we're showing here is a few gizmos that, in the UI that let you uh, that let you edit your content. If I switch over here to the editor, uh, I can also do a bit of drag and drop directly into this uh, into this uh, simulation view. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll make some stuff. And you got your gizmos here. But uh, yeah, we'll, we hope you like it. Additionally, we let you test your content, uh, and I'll switch back over to the editor and show you a little bit uh, of what that looks like. Um, so here on the left-hand side, we're able to walk through uh, walk through the simulated kitchen environment. And keep in mind, you can bring your own model environment. You can bring in your own scan. So if you have a location-based event uh, that you want to prepare an AR, con AR uh, content for, you can do that. If you're in an industrial environment, we can, you can bring in uh, a factory floor or whatever you need. Um, and we're seeing here on the right, we've got... Um, got this. Uh, got this new simulation view that lets us test our content, iterate our content uh, really quickly, and uh, given a given a generic um, AR device. Once you have that content, you'll be able to to run that content reliably uh, on a variety of devices, mobile or or head mounted, and um, and and then your your application will be able to you know, tell easily tell the difference between a floor, a table, a pool table in this case, and um, this is something one of our, our beta. Um, beta Studios, uh, Beta Partners was able to uh, get get up and running in just in a matter uh, in a matter of a couple of hours. Um, so it's really fast to, to develop a, a quick prototype that that you know doesn't look half bad. I want to also tell you a bit a bit about the companion apps that will be shipping shortly after launch and then later in the year. The companion app is an app that's available on standalone devices, and it'll really speed up your your workflows uh, by allowing you to capture uh, real world data directly from the device. If you uh, resolve any ambiguity about how an actual device will perceive the environment, or you you have the opportunity to be on site to capture context uh, directly from the place that your your application is going to run in, you won't have to guess. You'll be able to capture that data. Uh, right then and there. Shortly after launch, we'll have uh, the Android and iOS uh, versions of the mobile companion app available, and then and then later in the year, we'll have have our HMD apps uh, ready for you as well. Uh, worth bearing in mind, this is not a remote. We know all of you want a remote real bad, and um, it's on the way. Uh, we've got some some great teams working on it, and, and that'll that'll be out to you. Uh, just stay tuned. So in this use case, I want to show you we're, we're going to teach folks how to play the piano. That's the end user application. You can think of that as being um, something that you would uh, similar workflow if you're making an industrial training app or if you're making a product education app for retail customers or e-commerce customers. So what we're going to do here is what we're showing is um, we're, we're syncing up. We're on an Android device uh, in the companion app. We're going to sync this up uh, to a Unity project uh, via the Unity Cloud. We're going to go ahead and capture. We're, here we're seeing how the, the actual device sees that plane that sits on top of uh, on top of the piano, we're going to author a proxy directly inside this uh, inside this app and add a little bit of content to it, uh, define it, create it. 
and then we're going to save it. Now we're going to pull this into the Unity Editor, and we're going to see, uh, and, and what we get, we get that authored proxy. We also have a video that we can also use in the simulation environment. Um, so if you uh, do a walkthrough of the of the environment where your uh, your application is going to run in, you can you can use that as, as as a simulation environment. Additional thing that we're going to have for you is is rules. So this this isn't a launch feature. This is going to be we'll, we'll have this for you a couple months after launch, more like you know, summertime, um, early fall for you. Uh, but we wanted to give you give you a quick preview to, to show you where we're going. Uh, so rules are attempted to allow you to uh, to define your content procedurally. So you know, what we're seeing here on, on the left hand side, we're we're, we're going to have new UI for you uh, to be able to um, show you uh, how to you're going to define a proxy and, and you're going to be able to set a rule on it, um, and then you know you'll get. You know, actions uh, and so often that'll be spawning here we're showing a land transform that we're spawning here in the, in the bottom right you'll see in, in, in the simulation view um, and um, yeah this allows you to this will you know more on this later you know kind of I'm, I'm going to cut this video short but um, you'll be able to see uh, we'll have more for you and and um, something you should be you'll get excited for I want to touch on how Mars and air foundation just work work really really well together um, you know Mars you know we it works better AR works better when you're able to bring in uh, all, all sorts of world understanding uh, and of course we're gonna you know we've got data coming in through platforms through from from Apple and Google and magic leap and, and others um, and uh, they, they come in through our, our unity XR packages um, layer which that then gets uh, processed in, in air foundation air foundation provides a low level of abstraction uh, that you know one one API that we were able to, to build against and then Mars utilizes that and uh, and so you're you know Mars very much leverages air foundation and bring in world understanding uh, and so you can use air foundation and Mars uh, together they work really well together you can add Mars to an existing app that you already have made using air foundation uh, and it'll make your life easier uh, through that simulation view uh, right off the bat then you can add, add more to it uh, as you see fit Additionally, we have the ability to bring in custom providers. So if you have your own uh, homegrown data provider, whether that's hardware or software, uh, we're able to uh, bring that directly into Mars and we have, have APIs for you so you can define your own providers that come into Mars. Uh, Mars can be used to build a, a wide variety of, of games and apps, uh, whether you're using, using Mars in uh, a gaming context, where you're using it in a storytelling, media and entertainment context, uh, for product visualization, uh, in industrial. Uh, we want we want you to we built Mars uh, for you, and we want you to uh, to make sure that you have the workflows that you need. Um, so whether you're in a location making in a location based app, and you need to bring in a photogrammetry scan, or you need uh, affordances for uh, to bring in your own model environments, uh, we want to have that ready for you and and be able to tackle a wide variety uh, of of different types of uh, scene understanding. So with that, you know, thank you, Dan, uh, and I'm going to have Dan uh, go ahead and and uh, you know g give you a, a deeper deeper dive um, with the with the robot demo that we've got, um, uh, and passing it over to Dan. All right, here we have a project that's been loaded up with the Mars package. Now I'm in a completely empty scene, but you might notice some newer panels here in Unity. On the far left, we have the Mars panel, which handles things like presets, primitives, as well as giving us access to our content and environmental hierarchy. Next to that, in the center middle, we have the simulation view, which I'll mostly be working in for this demo. Under that, we have the normal Unity scene view, and next to that, the device view. Following that, we have just the normal Unity scene hierarchy, project hierarchy, and inspector. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and save this new scene. And once I do that, I can go ahead and bake the lighting just to uh, get the visuals looking a little bit better. Now, you might notice there in the simulation view, we actually have a warning um, that the Mars session hasn't been added. So to do that, I can simply right click Create Mars Mars Session. And now the device view is also synced up. So the simulation view is a little bit similar to the Unity scene view, except we're seeing a simulated environment. But things like the navigation controls and other uh, drag and drop functionality should feel very familiar to any Unity user. 
So the first thing we want to do is go to right click create Mars proxy object. Now a proxy object in Mars is relative to real world data. But since we've created an empty one here, you can see that there's this warning that says add plane size condition because there hasn't been any real world data associated with this. So when we click that, we'll notice now that our proxy object is actually visible now in the simulation view. And that's this little diamond gizmo that we see now. Now this looks good and we have a proxy object, but we don't have any content relative to it. So here I just dragged the mining robot to be underneath the proxy object and I'm zeroing it out so we can actually see a visual of it. Now this looks pretty good, but I don't necessarily want my robot to be spawning on the side of a dresser here. Instead, I kind of want it to be more spawning on a larger horizontal surface, like the bed for example. So to do this, I can go into my proxy object and add a Mars component. And these are a special set of components. Here I've added the alignment condition, which has different options for how you want your content to be aligned. In this case, I'm aligning it with horizontal up, and that puts the robot object on the chair, which is another horizontal surface. Now notice the plane size conditions. We have things like the minimum and maximum size. And if I start to increase the minimum size, it now becomes bigger than the plane found on the chair. Because of that, we see the robot jump over to the bed. Now there's multiple ways to start adjusting and placing content, as well as understanding what is in the simulated environment. One of the easiest methods here is the compare in simulation view button. Clicking this allows me to go in and start to identify all the surfaces that are currently in the simulation view and how they've met or not met the conditions of my current proxy object. Here you can see that the plane size on the chair has smaller data than is included in my minimum size. I can simply hit the optimize key and that now allows me to optimize the conditions for the object that I want. And now we have the robot back on the bed. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start placing content around the scene. We wanna create a small interactive game that allows this robot to move around our simulated environment and later on, as you'll see, our real world environment. Now to do this, I'm gonna start using a drag and drop methodology. Here, I can simply take the easy crystal, drag it onto the floor plane, and this create window pops up. Now in this create window, you'll notice things like semantic tags, conditions, and other options depending on where and how I dragged my object. Once I hit confirm, you can see that a, another proxy object was created and it has the crystal as a child. Here I can easily duplicate just like we would in normal Unity and drag this uh, other easy crystal next to it. So now we have two crystals spawning relative to the same plane floor. And notice that I kept the semantic tagging for the plane floor so that it's really looking for the floor object in order to spawn its uh, content. Now, right now you'll notice that the easy crystals are a little bit offset from the center of the plane. To fix that, I can just grab the crystals and align them a little bit more to the center of my proxy object, which in this case is a plane representing the floor. So right now they're spawning kind of under the bed, but as you'll see in the device view, and once we start to simulate how this experience will actually take place, a plane will need to be found, which will relieve it from kind of spawning under a surface that we hadn't found a plane on. So now let's go ahead and start with the device view. First, I'm gonna to go to the visualizers in the Mars panel in order to enable planes and point clouds to be visualized. Here you can see I'm moving my uh, camera around and you can see the feature points as well as the planes being spawned relative to how I'm moving my device. This is very similar to what the experience of using mobile augmented reality is. As you move your device throughout the space, planes are found, they expand as they see more content, and you can see my content spawning relative to the different conditions. We can also add additional conditions like the height above floor condition to our proxy object that's maintaining the robot. This will allow it to make sure that the robot spawns off of the ground or above the floor. 
Here we can change things like an ideal height, a range from ideal height, as well as if it's required to be within that range specifically. What you'll notice here is once I rerun the simulation and we have that above floor height condition, You'll now see that the robot spawns correctly on the bed and the crystals are placed on the floor. All right, now let's start spawning other crystals. For here, I'm placing the medium crystal and I'm placing it on the chair that's relative to the plane. Now, I do want this to have height above a floor, so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that. So now we should see this crystal spawn on a relatively small plane above the floor. And the last crystal that I want is to spawn relative to the wall. So here I'm going to drag the hard crystal up against the wall plane. And again, we have these different options here. I'm going to ignore the plane condition here for the create because I really just want this crystal to appear on any wall or really any vertical surface. Now, over here in the scene view, I can again kind of align my object or zero it out relative to the proxy. This allows it to A, stay in the center of any vertical surfaces that I found, and B, I can actually adjust the rotation so that it looks a little more visually pleasing. Here you can see it jutting out from the wall rather than floating next to it. So we have everything set up for spawning, but we haven't really enabled any logic to actually get this game to work. To do that, I'm next gonna create another proxy object. And this one's gonna be a little more complex. Let's go ahead and add our plane size condition. And for this, I'm gonna remove the maximum size and set the minimum size to 0.2 in both the X and Y. This is actually about the size of the robot. And here we need to now remove an action so that we can add another action. Here I'm adding the build surface action, which is basically a callback that references every time a new surface is found. I can add a mesh collider here and change its cooking options in order for it to be updated every time the surface happens. Next, I'm gonna change the layer in order for my game logic to work correctly. And finally, I'm gonna add a condition that this object only happens for for proxies with the trait of a plane. So now what we're doing is we've created a proxy object that's manually set up in order to spawn on the planes. But you'll notice there in the content hierarchy that it has a single match within our simulation view. It's spawning once. You'll also notice the exclusivity option here, and I'm going to change that from exclusive to read only. This allows the object to share the same space as other spawned objects. Next, we can go into the primitives replicator. And this is basically a pre-built object that spawns multiple proxies depending on what it has as a child. Once I place that proxy object under the replicator, you'll notice there in the content hierarchy that it's found several matches throughout the simulation view. And that's due in part to the replicator, as well as the exclusivity, which we set to read only. We can rename it to plane collider just to get a little more context. And that's basically it. We now have objects spawning around the simulated environment that will be represented based on real world data. We've set up a replicator that allows these collider objects to be spawned relative to the planes which give our player logic as he's clicking around using normal Raycast in Unity. We've set up different conditions to spawn different types of crystals in order to create dynamic environments based on the real world via a simulation view here within the editor. And now we can go ahead and click the play button in Unity so we can actually test all of that out directly here in the editor. Before we were in the device view, and now this is just play mode. We have similar functionality to visualizing and creating planes and feature points. And as I move around, 
I can then see that content spawn. Here on the surface, you see the wall crystal, and then you see the character there spawn on the ground. Because we're in play mode, we can use the normal mouse and keyboard controls that are available within Unity to actually control our character. Here we can look over and double click in order for him to jump between surfaces. All right, and here we have the app actually running on device. In this case, I'm running it on an iPad, so it's utilizing ARKit. You can see it find the planes and the surfaces for both the horizontal and vertical surfaces. There we collected one ground crystal, and now I'll move over and grab the vertical crystal. Now we can jump back up on the table, and as I continue to scan, content is still spawned as the conditions are met. Now once we look, we can go and grab that last ground crystal, and then jump up on the chair to grab the final medium crystal. All right, so there we saw a demo of how to utilize Mars in the Unity Editor some of the special tooling and windows it provides. And now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and hear from Crikey, an augmented reality development company who's building a platform utilizing AR Foundation and more recently, Mars. Hi, we're Crikey and we're excited to present today on how we're using the Mars Toolkit for AR gaming. My name is John B and I'm the CEO of Crikey. I did my BA and MBA at Stanford and worked at YouTube for a few years before coming back to start the company with my sister. Hey, I'm Kedeke, I'm the CTO here at Crikey. I received my BA, MA and PhD at the Stanford Virtual Human Interaction Lab. While I was there, I worked at Oculus VR and also at Google X on the Glass team. Here at Crikey, I manage all things engineering, product and design. And what is Crikey? We are a mobile augmented reality gaming app where Create Meets Play. We build all of our AR games from scratch, everything from the texture on the leaves to the gorilla and bird animations to the game design. Our users can create seven second highlight reel videos that they can post to our platform or elsewhere. And all of our games are location-based. We are live both on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. We are excited today to share more about how we use the Unity game engine. We'll start with the camera. Crikey uses both AR Foundation and Mars to generate live computer vision games and experiences in camera. We also use the Unity Maps SDK with Google Maps to build location-based AR games. Finally, Crikey has also built a custom video solution that allows us to record and live edit users' game videos. AR Foundation brings together the best features of AR Kit and AR Core tools. These features include plane detection, which allows us to spawn games on the user's actual ground plane, camera translation, which allows us to approach virtual objects as though they were in the physical room with us. For example, objects will grow larger as you get closer to them in AR with camera translation. Unity's new toolkit, Mars, allows us to take mobile computing for AR experiences to the next level with contextual computer vision. We'll share more about how Crikey is using the Mars toolkit in the upcoming slides. Today, Crikey is excited to share how we've been using the Mars Toolkit. Mars provides mobile-optimized computer vision features that help us build contextual computer vision experiences. It does this by allowing us access to raw point cloud data in real time, both inside the Unity Editor and on device. This means that developers can recognize features in the physical world and use them in real time inside AR game experiences. Mars also enables end-to-end -end testing in the editor, reducing build times for developers who are interested in building AR games and experiences. In the next slides, we'll share more about how Crikey has utilized Mars in one of our games and discuss other applications in mobile AR gaming. I'll start by talking a little bit about point cloud data and why this is so important. Mars provides raw point cloud data to developers, which enables multiple contextual computer vision applications. We can use these points uh, by clustering them into largest sections, this enables us to know which are the largest objects in the room and where our characters should be interacting. We can also differentiate different planes in real time and know the Y and Z depth between these planes. Lastly, and most importantly, Mars is persistent. It allows us to save an infinite number of planes during just one camera session, meaning that AR experiences can grow more complex the longer the user stays in them. In the GIF at right, you can see that Mars is detecting multiple planes in real time, both vertical and horizontal. The simulation view. Mars enables the use of the simulation view to test AR experiences in the editor. 
We can use surfaces to spawn objects, add textures, and dynamically test game mechanics between different surfaces. We can also add conditions to see how objects might function in real-world situations. These features are critical for AR development because they allow us to test things without making a build to device, which can often be time-consuming. In effect, Mars reduces the time to ship within editor testing. In the GIF at left, you can see that we're using Mars on device to draw a bridge between a ground plane and a table. Because Mars knows the Y and the Z depth differences between these two planes, the bridge that's drawn with rocks is at exactly the right angle between the two planes, and our character is able to run between them. I'll now talk a little bit about the psychology of AR interactions and why Mars is so important for augmented reality game consumers. The first is social presence. We need AR experiences to be very realistic so that users feel like they can truly connect with the characters in these games. Mars enables this by giving us spatial reasoning data about the world around us. Secondly, immersion. Context-driven games blur the, the line between what is virtual and what is physical, making it seem as though AR characters truly understand where the user is and how to behave around them. Finally, a theory called the media equation suggests that these increases in realism can result in higher impact experiences for users and greater retention. We'll now talk more specifically about Crikey's implementation of Mars. Here's a quick overview. We're using Mars to build bridges in real time between physical surfaces during gameplay. We're doing this by detecting multiple planes with the raw point cloud data, spawning objects on these planes, and saving them over time so that users can draw an infinite number of bridges and continue to play the game. Here's a sample of how we're detecting multiple planes. We first build clusters of the largest point cloud groups inside the camera view. We also find multiple planes based on the data Mars is giving us. Finally, we repeat this process in real time so long as the session is live. What you can see at right is us using the Unity editor to test out this workflow prior to building it to device. Second, spawning objects. Mars integrates seamlessly with the current Unity game engine, allowing the use of tools like a nav mesh to produce compelling games. For example, we can generate character movements across multiple planes using the Mars toolkit and the current Unity game engine with the nav mesh. Also, we can load objects on top of detected surfaces. What you can see at left is our character being spawned on top of a surface and then multiple additional objects being loaded. The character can then run between the bounds of the surface before the user draws their first bridge in the game. Finally, and most importantly, Mars is mobile optimized cross-platform, meaning that it can work on any iOS or Android device, which is critical for us as game developers. Persistent data. Mars allows developers to save point cloud data over time for complex contextual experiences. This is important because we want to retain every surface position in a given game session such that users can draw a bridge between the most recent plane they've detected and the first plane they've detected. This opens up countless new game mechanics for us. As I've mentioned in the previous slides, we can do this by continuing the workflow of detecting point clouds, spawning game assets on the surface, and saving multiple surfaces. You can see in the GIF at right that we've generated multiple planes in the editor and are now able to draw a bridge between them. Our character is able to run up the bridge and fight enemies in real time. Finally, here's a demo that shows exactly how Mars works in the real world. In this demo, our character is running between multiple surfaces of different textures and different heights. With Mars on in real time on the phone camera, we can actually detect these different planes and draw bridges between them. This allows our character to traverse as many planes as we'd like for as long as we want. And because Mars is performant on mobile devices, users can play this game without any drain of battery. And finally, here's a little screen grab of the Mars editor. This is a particularly exciting component of this toolkit for Crikey. As AR game developers, we've frequently been faced with long build times just to test a simple change to our game. With Mars, this is no longer the case. Things like UI changes or even game mechanics can be tested seamlessly inside of Mars without any worry about whether or not they'll work correctly on the device. In conclusion, Mars has been a groundbreaking tool for us as developers. It offers us in-editor testing, live computer vision, and is optimized for mobile. Thank you so much, Unity, for giving us this opportunity to share Crikey with your audience. And everyone who's been watching at home today, we would love to hear from you if you've tried our app. If you decide to post any videos that you've created on Crikey, please feel free to share them with the hashtag Crikey. Thank you.
In conclusion, AR Foundation enables the AR platforms within Unity, offering you as a developer an easy to use API that's abstracted on all the unique features available on these platforms. And Mars allows you to build more immersive, more intuitive AR applications by providing you with features and tools built directly on top of the Unity editor, along with companion apps that allow you to capture real-world data and bring it back into the Unity editor. For additional information on Mars, be sure to check out the product page. To stay up to date on Mars information and news, you can follow this link here. And lastly, you can follow up and find more information about Crikey on www.crikey.com. Unity's Learn Premium is live sessions on demand and additional resources available at learn.unity.com. It features content and examples for all level of Unity users, from very beginners to experienced developers. Complimentary access is available for all users through June 20th. Thank you for attending this session. Feel free to use the hashtag UniteNow2020 to follow up on more UniteNow content and associated resources.